Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm going to try to spend the next 30 minutes putting together the last day and a half. And I'm going to give you a two minutes of a sales pitch. And I mean that. So what the heck, Steve, does survive and advance me? Survive and advance. Anybody want to take a guess? Yeah. Live to fight another day. Live to fight another day. Who in this industry lived to fight another day back in 2009? I think all of us, right? So before I start, Steve walked up. I think he owned a little bit of MWAI. Yes. I'm the other guy in the audience, depending on what you read or what press you look at, that works for the devil. That's what the press says. <laughs> Mitch Romney, we're owned by private equity. Oh. <laughs> and the other thing, I was the other guy who raised my hand this morning during the Sharp presentation, reading pre economics and money. I have a degree in math and applied statistics that my friend here made a lot of fun about the other night. So, let me start. Andy sent me this picture. It's from the 4th of July weekend in upstate New York. Four years ago, I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina after 28 years of the Xerox Corporation. From Lake Ontario down to the Great South. Big change, 28 years in the same time. We got to Raleigh, very excited. My wife was going to get a new home. A little bit of a story here. We walk into a town, a city called Cary, North Carolina. It's one of the top rated cities in Newsweek, US News and World Report, money, whatever, to live, raise a family, technology, whatever. Top, top five. We walk into a house all excited. First week of my wife is down there. The realtor looks at me and goes, where are you all from? I said, I'm upstate New York. Do you know what carry stands for? I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, I do not. Containment area for relocating Yankees. <laughs> That's a true story. I said, oh my god, what did I get myself into? I'm a rabid Syracuse basketball fan. Left them from upstate New York. One thing I found out in Raleigh is basketball is a religion. You got Wake Forest over here, then you have UNC, North Carolina State, and lo and behold, a year after I moved down there, they joined the ACC, diving down to heaven. I can watch them more down in Raleigh, North Carolina, than I could have got just in New York. So let me ask a question here. Probably one of the best basketball games I've ever played. 1983, national championship. I'm not going to do a real good imitation, but he's sitting down in the chair. There's a buzzer beater. Hops out of his chair. He's running down the stage with his hands up. Running all over the place. One end of court to the other. Anybody remember who that was? Galvano. Close. Galvano. Jimmy V. Jimmy V. Two years ago, Frank recognized his fun that we've all been impacting with people, friends, loved ones, ourselves, with cancer. But if you remember Jimmy V, what do most people remember Jimmy V for? That great speech. Don't give up. Don't, ever give up. Don't give up. He also coined another term with a sportscaster. Survive in advance. Survive in advance. He said, you got to get through the first bracket, survive. Then you got to advance. So if I go back and look at 2008, then you go to 2009, I don't know about you guys, but I think I was at Xerox at that time. Xerox survived in advance. I get into ESP in 2010. I get my management team together. I said, OK, guys, what do we do? Remember what the gentleman from Cisco asked? Who's going to put you out of business? What's the impact, the financial impact, to your company? 
I worked in the paper industry for about five years. I had a great friend at a major paper corporation that did strategic forecasts for paper. This is a slide that I brought with me in 2010 that I showed to my senior staff. And I said, where are we going? What are we going to do? Now, everybody here in Bess, you walk into your financial planner, you whip out this slide, look at this great PE ratio. Look at the great share price. What's your financial planner going to say to you? You knucklehead, you're investing in that? These are real numbers. To put it in perspective, this is an uncoded pre sheet. This is what images go on, offset, color, whatever. The industry has lost 264 million cartons of paper, 10 ring cartons. That will wrap around the world three times. That's what we've all lost with images on paper. Does anybody think that chart's going to change? Remember, I got this slide in 2010. That dotted line is actually what happened. So now you think about Apple, right? Apple Pay. You get your RSS newsfeed automatically. So who would have ever known back in 2008 and 2009 that this was going to happen today? So you all own your own companies. You're all the leaders of your companies. I heard somebody this morning say, you know, we're going to invest in the company, we're going to hand it out to our kids, maybe we're going to sell it. But I'm in the same exact industry as you are. So we didn't sit by and say, we're going to take this, sit down. So what did we do? And that's what I'd like to try to share with you. So we did three things. We tried to expand our business. Where's the other seam of opportunity? that we could go after. I think you heard a lot about that, right, over the last day and a half. There's all kinds of opportunities out there. We invested heavily in research. We went from nine products to 100 products, went into multiple verticals, and we took our patent portfolio from nine to 41 in a period of two and a half years to expand our business and to give our dealer partners more capabilities. Then we try to become significant. And I think significance is very important. Significant both to your customer, but who else do you need to be significant to? Who here manufactures their own products? A couple of us. You need to be significant to your vendor so that your vendor supports you, gives you what you need. And then finally, a lot of conversation on partners. I'm a mid-sized company. I certainly can't do it all alone. So we looked on the horizon to try to find out who we can partner with to add value to our customers. So let me talk about the first one. We took a step back. Isn't this a much prettier chart? <laughs> it's going up. It is going up. Three or four percent a year. This isn't my data. This is the IT market space as defined by Gartner in the United States. Holy mackerel! 4.3 trillion. What have you heard about the last day and a half? IT, 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 Internet of Things. The other thing that's important about IT, from my opinion, is when you look at IT, you need to follow it. We sell multifunction printers. Where are they hooked to? They're hung on the network. This whole internet thing is going through IT at some point. Now, we had the panel this morning. Those guys were pretty tough, right? IT is not easy to sell to, speaking from experience. You got to open the door. They're very smart. They're very busy. And there's one other thing I learned in IT during my career. They don't like taking risks. You have to prove to them your value. And then the other thing is that everything is converging. It's being networked, it's being hooked, and that's the internet things. I'll take 1% of this slide. 
So, what's a couple of things in that space? 8.3 million, million servers sold worldwide. That marketplace is growing. It grew double digit last year with a refresh. Flat panel, public display TVs. Todd Pike makes a whole bunch of them. 4.5. And then the fall, the small fish that we caught back in 2008 and 2009, depending on whose daddy you want to use, it's a great market. We can still all make a lot of money out of it. 800,000, segment three and above, multifunction curve. So is there opportunity in the IT space? Absolutely. And the other thing is all these devices are now connected. You walk into an airport, you see the TVs, the three by threes, the two by twos, whatever. What do you see on that TV? Is it static? No, somebody's feeding it information. It's continuously changing. Servers, this morning, Atlantic. Anybody remember what he said the refresh cycle was typically? Three years. I'll talk about that here in a second. So, you walk into the office. What does your rep look for? What does your sales rep look for? Sitting right there, isn't it? How often can you sell that device? Every three years, 36 months, 48 months? Flip it. Then he walks down the street or she walks down the street sells it to another customer. Well, during that three or four year period, who else is walking in that office? IT bars, your competitors, you don't have that relationship with the customer. So, when you walk into that office, look around. If you walk into our facility today, you'll see digital displays, you'll see a RICO projector up in the ceiling, we have two server rooms, we have a security server. We have storage. We have a phone system. And there's one thing that's unique about all of those. I love it. Business I am anyway. What happens to every single device on that page? They get plugged into the wall. And the nice thing about electronics, and somebody used the word this morning, mission critical with electronics, they have one commonality. Every single electronics that's sold anywhere worldwide has a base engine called a switch mode power supply. That switch mode power supply takes the power out of the wall, AC power, converts it to DC to the rails in the machine, and that's how all this great electronics run. For my company, one of the best things about that, those switch mode power supplies, no matter what device they're going in, are susceptible to power problems. It's a good thing for us, and it's a good thing for you. So yesterday in the IT discussion, the managed IT discussion, there was some numbers put up there. I added this slide last night. $10 million in IT, revenue, 200, 220 customers, if I recall the number. Some of our devices that go on those appliances, $400 a unit. It would take you 25,000 units to make that same revenue. A typical company might have, I don't know, 13, 10-story office building, 130. There's a revenue stream here for you. And more importantly, it gets you into talk to IT because all these devices are connected and IT owns those devices. Make sense? <coughs> So expand the revenue by selling power protection products or a power protection program into that IT space, whether it's my products or somebody else's. Every single one of those mission critical electronics, and I'll share some data here in a minute, should have power and surge protection. That's a revenue and profit stream for the dealership. And I'm going to give you a direct quote from one of the major CEOs in our engine space. You go, Steve, we tested your product. We love it. Base technology. I sell your product for one reason. I make a boatload of money off it. That's a direct quote. It is a nice revenue and profit stream. It's an accessory sale. 
But the other thing it can do, and you heard from Sharp this morning, what was Sharp talking about? Lowering what? Lowering your service costs. I know there's a lot of naysayers, so I'm going to talk a bit about that, and what surge protection does for an electronic device. So there's a slot machine. Who goes to the casinos? Anybody? Oh, come on. <laughs> Somebody's lying. <laughs> Casino, slot machine, a server, and then an imaging device. We had one of the major casinos in North America, rated number three for performance, capabilities, come to us after learning what our technology could do. Guess what's inside of that slot machine? A switch mode power supply. And it's more sophisticated than what goes in the imaging device. They ran a study, a very scientific study. I didn't run the study. They brought the data back to me. $1,200 ROI per slot machine on an annualized basis. You sit here and say, yes, yeah, sure. It's not my data. They save labor. They save uptime. They save parts. And one of the most important things, it's kind of a fascinating industry, it would take them an hour to reboot that machine. They'd have to call up and get a state guy in there so you know they're not screwing around with the machine and doing this and doing that. A typical consumer in a casino walks in there, pretty cool actually, and they only play on two slot machines every time they visit that same casino. That slot machine goes down, guess what that customer does? They either sit there and wait, they go back to their rooms. It's scary how much those things make an hour for a casino. 1,200. Big server company. I told you, 8.3 million servers sold worldwide. They were launching a very new product for the SMB space, the space we've been talking about for the last day and a half. Again, they searched the world for power protection. They came to us. They found us. I didn't find them. They said, Steve, you got the greatest product. We've got to do this, this, and this. You got to engineer it and need it in six months. My engineer was with me. I said, sure, kind of like the dog catching the tire. We'll get it done. Got back out in the car, you had a heart attack. <laughs> we designed a single wrap surge plus PDU. Illuminated rack space, had plugs on the back, and that wouldn't go into the SMB space. Again, they came back to us and said they're saving service savings. $650 per server rack. Not ESP surge X data, our data, their data. That's phenomenal. Think about that. You know how many servers they sell? About 3.2 million. <coughs> the other thing they said to me, and this is now two server companies, it's about 30 to 40 percent of the time, Steve, we get a call and it's no issue found. We either got to take it in our tier one or tier two phone support, or we got a roll truck. That's how they got some of the savings. And then last but not least, my friend Frank came to our facility two years ago and challenged our BDI stuff, very legitimately. So we went out, got 150,000 machines across every OEM, and BDI then studied for us over an annualized year. And they came back and told us $209 per MFP. Again, a very scientific study. I know some people, for whatever reason, none of my business, don't necessarily believe BES. So the next step we took, remember the math and applied statistics degree? No, go ahead. <laughs> I went to a school where I graduated with that. It's called the John Harami School of Math and Applied Statistics. They dug into that data under an NDA. Eight PhD, eight PhD statisticians. These guys are really professional. After eight weeks, they came back and they validated that data. So three different market spaces: the imaging space, the IT space, gaming, and we're working on others. All are coming back with their own data, saying to us, "There's a significant service." Thing. The next thing is we now have remote capability. I'm talking to the gentleman at the casino. He said, yes, yeah, something where I can cycle that machine remotely via my network. He said, absolutely. Put it on the device. We're in his office. A whole bank of slots go down. 
He pushes a button, he cycles the machine, took him two minutes, used to take him one hour. Pretty substantial saving. So you can make revenue and profit off of these products, and most importantly, lower your service expenses. So that's what I mean by expand. That's what we got together and looked at what other markets could we go into and how can we support our dealer channel and our core business. The next thing was how to become significant. How can you become significant to your customers and your vendors and your partners? Promote the value. Connect the dots for your customers. I think I heard a lot this morning on that panel about IT and what you have to communicate and what you have to say. Who now is going to go out and sell an $85 per hour IT service? Anybody in the room? It's not my business. I should 